what I have here is a smaller stick here that I'm gonna cut, I don't know, you know, probably my thumb, thumb width, uh, thumb length amount. And just use my snips for uh, speed. Right, cool. So that's pretty much. That's pretty much it. Okay. So I've got um, this with a little wedge cut out of it, like so, all the way around. And so now, what I want to do is I want to find about my tension. Okay. So. Probably gonna need about this much in my cordage here. And I'm gonna go ahead and make another strangle knot, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, eh, I'm gonna go up here a bit. Okay? I make a loop, go uh, overhand knot, and do a double overhand knot, like so. And then I fold the two, I fold the single loop into a double loop. Okay, like so, okay? And go ahead and slide this on top and pull it tight. Okay? And again, I don't have to cut my cordage because once the trap is done, I may be able to use this cordage for something else. So, you know, when you're cutting your cordage up, you end up with a bunch of short pieces of cordage. The best thing is, you know, know your knots, uh, know your loops, you know, know some good knots, I should say. Um, and that way you can save your cordage by not cutting so much okay and um, we pretty much have this part set up okay the last part that we need okay the part of the trigger mechanism is the bait stick okay and the, really it's kind of unlike the figure four I can kind of put it together and hold it and you can see how it functions the, the unfortunate thing with the uh, with, with the, the Paiute trap is that it has to actually be set up for you to kind of see how all the pieces work together. But essentially, if I lay this down like so, essentially what happens here, which is the crossbar, and this is the angle stick, and you have your cordage here, essentially you want to take your bait stick, and the bait stick pushes or rests and or provides tension against the crossbar here and the end of the bait stick over here um, is either rested or pushing against the back of your deadfall or into the ground and so you put your bait you line your bait somewhere up in here or this stick um, which it actually would be much thinner than this as long as it's strong enough to hold the tension um, could just be in the way of a trail and most likely the animal will try to go under or over it or just knock right through it, especially if it looks like a blade of glass. And the whole mechanism will come apart, like so, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set this up so that you can see how it actually looks. But essentially the Paiute trap is support stick, angle stick, cordage, crossbar, and bait stick, okay, like so, okay. All right, we're gonna set up the Paiute trap now. Uh, what I have here is my deadfall here, and I have a rock, I have a rock that the, that the, uh, the support stick is gonna be sitting on, okay. Uh, the support stick has a tendency to, to sink, especially with the weight of this type of deadfall. And what can happen is when the trap triggers, the deadfall will just kind of fall onto the support stick and uh, the, the trap it becomes ineffective, right? I also have here, what you see here, is a couple of uh, support posts, okay, here and here, okay? And these support posts help this, this particular deadfall from rolling from, to either side, all right? which adds the safety factor and also keeps it from triggering prematurely with a gust of wind or something like that. All right, so let's set up uh, the uh, Paiu trap. I essentially take the two, uh, the support stick and the angle stick here. I go ahead and I lift up <clears throat> and I have a node that's cut into this log uh, for this purpose, okay? So it's actually sitting up and up in here. Okay, on this little node keeps it from rolling back and forth all right so the next I go ahead and I take my crossbar and I wrap it around the support stick and let the weight 
of the stick from the angle stick rest onto it, okay? See that? So I'm just holding the, the uh, crossbar right now. Next, I take my bait stick, okay? The bait stick itself would rest against the back of the, of the trap, okay, or into the ground, okay? Either one way works pretty good, okay? So I'm just going to wedge this into the ground a little bit, in here, and have this kind of support. Oops, got to be careful. Be careful when you're setting up traps, because if they spring on you, they're, they, they hurt. So what I want to do is I want to create a, a way for this to kind of set down up in there. There we go. Okay, so and this holds on. Whoa! You see, that's why you got to be careful. You got to be very careful. You don't want to get got by your own ordinance. <sighs> All right. So, take this, take the crossbar, wrap it around once. I'm holding on to the crossbar. <sighs> A distance. Okay. And again, let's not have this happen twice. And then, this will support against the uh, the base stick the uh, horizontal stick now is is being pressed against the bait stick which allows the uh, trap to be ready to go all right so what it is is you put your bait somewhere up in here and if you're worried about the animal jumping out or getting away before the trap is sprung what you would then do is probably cover the area around here with brush or other sticks and allow only one opening for the animal preferably up through this way up up in here um, for the animal to come up in here and have to get up underneath the trap here and try to grab the bait and back out if it senses or knows that the trap is, is, is being sprung okay so essentially how this works is the animals coming along Boom, and there went my stick. Broke it. <laughs> okay, so these traps do work. Um, be careful if you choose to practice them because you can smash your hands, smash your head, lose an eye. All right, so uh, just be just know that most traps, uh, most primitive traps or primitive traps are illegal in most states. So they're only to be used under extreme life or death situations. All right. Um, they can be inhumane um, because they don't necessarily um, take out the animal right away. Sometimes you may happen up on a trap and it's still uh, alive or trying to drag itself away from it. So um, if, if set up properly, they can be very effective and they can be humane. But um, it's important to know the ethics are behind trapping and, and you have to need a trap. Or you have to need it in order to, to, um, to uh, set it up ethically and, and try it out. Right? Um, if you wanted to set up a trap to test these to see if they do work to test your, your, your trap making skills, um, find a box, you know, an old wine wooden box or something like that. And, um, and that way you're, you're not, you're not um, harming the animal really. You just, you just cover them up and then you can let the box up and they can, they can go away. Um, might be a little wiser the next time too. Um, you can usually get cats um, one time. Uh, <laughs> but uh, other than that, um, just be careful, uh, know the laws in your states in regards to primitive trapping, and um, uh, just be safe.